the of the promise that's in the precious blood of the Lamb. Wherever you may be, I dare you to lift those hands and begin to praise God and thank God for the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross. Just lift those hands and just thank God for the blood. Oh, thank you for the blood.
today. So if you are here and you have your tithes and offer, you didn't have to uh, cash app, you didn't have to uh, mail it, you can put it in the box. Amen. The deacons, trustees will walk around if you have an offering. Amen. That you would like to be a blessing to the ministry. Uh, those of you, amen, that someone bring me the sheet because I can't look at it on my seat on my phone, but if you all find the sheet in there with the cash app information on there, amen. Amen. It is on, that should be on the screen as well. Amen. I know it's www.givethefire. Also, you can do the cash app at All Nations Joliet. That's dollar sign, All Nations Joliet. Um, there's another way. And also, we have our text to give, our, our ways of giving. And of course, you can always bring it down to 503 South Water Street, Joliet, Illinois. Amen. No place like this place, nowhere near this place. Amen. 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 Those of you that are in your car, look at somebody in the other car and just say to them, I'm so glad to see you. Uh-huh, find another vehicle, look, look, look them, oh, roll down that window, turn your ear down some, and just say, I'm so glad to see you, for it's a blessing to be seen, amen, and not viewed, 
And we're glad that the Lord has allowed us to be seen on today, lifting up the name of Jesus. Amen, for he's worthy to be praised. Thank you to all of you who have tuned in on this afternoon to our live worship experience. We pray that a word is spoken, a song is sang, that will lift your hearts and your spirit to continue to move forward, amen, in the power of God. I want to say congratulations to uh, Brother Tony and Keisha Rose, amen, as God has blessed them with a new addition to their family, amen, on this past week, amen, being fruitful and multiplying. So we thank God for the help of the baby and the, the mother and the father, amen. God is good, amen. He's worthy to be praised. Continue to, amen, be uh, mindful that we have our uh, giving on Wednesday from 10 to noon. Amen. You can come down to the garden and get fresh fruits and vegetables for free. Fresh fruits and vegetables from group for free at the community garden here on the premises of the All Nations Church, as well as our food bank is open from 10 to 12 noon. I want to encourage you. I'm going to take this moment and I want to encourage uh, everyone that is under the sound of my voice, those that are listening via Facebook and those that are in your cars. I want you to hear me real clear and real good. I need you to take your census. I'm going to say it again. You need to take the census. Some people say, well, what do I need to take the census? It is vital and important. Amen. Do you know that the census is what causes Amen. them to be able to give monies to your area for hospitals, for medical health care, yeah. and then for your stores? All of those things are counted based upon the population that you live in. Amen. So if they don't have that, you're not counted, then they'll say there's no need to put stuff in this particular area yeah. because there's not enough people living there. It is important and it is vital that you take the census. Amen. I posted mine several months, a couple months ago in regards to that. I need you to take your census. Amen. And after you take the census, I want you to post it and say, I've taken the census. So you can encourage your brother and sister to do so. Now listen, I'm all for all this great movement, a black movement, but this is how you move things. Take the census. Amen. Amen. Somebody tap type in the chat. Take the census because that's how we are counted. And then on top of that, you've got to register to vote. There is no reason for none of you who are above 18 not registered to vote. You need to vote. Vote, vote, vote. But you must be registered. So I'm encouraging everyone. Get to the polls. But don't get to the poll and you ain't not, you have not registered. You need to register to vote as soon as possible, as well as take the census. Now, those of you who live in this area, amen, we're going to be having a meeting on August the 8th here on the premises outside that will allow the individuals as the IDOT uh, construction will be going forward. There was a survey put out. They were asking and requesting what are the needs of this area in the community. Unfortunately, a lot of people have not taken the survey. We need you to take the survey. That's how you get a response because they're asking, what do you want? Now, what happens when people say, what do you want? And then you don't tell them what you want. They're asking, what do you want? So it's important and vital that everyone, please, that is in the neighborhood, tell a neighbor that, tell a friend that is on this east south side of Joliet that is affected by I-80, we need to hear your voice. Amen? Now, they're taking the mute button off. Now you need to talk. Amen? So please make sure that you're in attendance. Amen. Further information will be going out in regards to August the 8th so that we can encourage and make sure that we provide the vital information and the data that is needed to make sure we empower our community and our area. Anybody knows me? I am for the church and the community. I believe that the church is the community. Amen. They're two in one. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're thankful. We're grateful for all the people of God. One more time, let me hear you hump those horns out there for Jesus. Listen, uh, uh, we still we want to do our community day, so I'm going to go quickly to the word of God here. Amen. We thank God for our sound people, our praise and worship leaders, our elders that are here. Amen. Our musicians, we thank God for everybody. And most of all, we thank God for the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go with me quickly to the book of Exodus, the book of Exodus chapter 12, the book of Exodus chapter 12. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The book of Exodus chapter 12. Praise the name of the Jesus. Book of Exodus chapter 12. Someone put that in there. The book of Exodus chapter 12. Chat, put that in the chat box for me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to somewhat cut through the, across the field, so I want to make sure that we get enough time to take communion because I want to remember, amen, 
the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, as often as you do this in remembrance of me, amen. And we want to make sure that we remember what Jesus did for us on Calvary's cross. Exodus chapter 12. Uh, I'm going to read the first two verses and then I'm going to skip down to verse 12. The first two verses and then I'm going to skip to verse 12. Uh, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations ye shall keep it a feast by the ordinance forever. We're going to go back to verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you. And the coronavirus shall not be upon you and the police brutality shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt and this day shall be unto you for a memorial we thank God for the word Lord we ask that you allow us to be used to speak unto your people a word of encouragement a word of strength and a word of power that may cause someone to say what must I do to be saved these and all blessings we do ask in your son Jesus name Thank God. Amen. Amen. For a few moments here, I'm going to just talk from the subject I'm covered. Uh, and uh, you can just hashtag and uh, side one. He gave me a pass. He gave me a pass. I'm covered. He gave me a pass. Uh, the Passover is a Jewish festival celebrating the exodus from Egypt and the Israelites' freedom from slavery to Egyptian, to the Egyptians. The Feast of the Passover, along with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, was the first of festivals to be commanded by God for Israel to observe. Uh, today, it involves special meals called the cedar, featuring unleavened bread and food items, symbolic of various aspects of the Exodus. Passover is one of the most widely celebrated Jewish holidays, along with the Shabbat. Uh, the weeks, uh, the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. Passover is one of the three pilgrimage, pilgrimage festival, festivals excuse me, in Scripture, during which the Jews were commanded to travel to Jerusalem and observe the feast together. Passovers take place in the spring during the Hebrew month of Nisan. In Western countries, Passover is celebrated early to mid-April and always close to Easter. Uh, so today I want to just talk about uh, the Passover for just a moment as we take a moment to reflect upon the blood of Jesus. I'll pick up uh, our rebuilding series on next Sunday, but I felt impressed in my spirit on today to just talk about the blood on yes, today. Yes. Amen. Uh, the blood never gets old. And I'm thankful for the blood. And so uh, as we read the text and we look at the story on today, we're dealing with Moses and Aaron have been commissioned by God to speak to the people to inform them that God is about to do a miracle for them. Uh -huh. Now we know that at this time they're in captivity, held by Pharaoh. Uh, they're in the land of Egypt. They're in bondage. They're in slavery. But at this point in time, God's about to bring deliverance to the Israel people. And so the Bible says that uh, he told them and he gave them some instructions. But there were a couple of things that went first. The first thing that had to be done, the blood had to be shed. The first thing that needed to be done, the blood had to be shed. Verse 6, and he shall keep it 
up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. The lamb was to live with the family for four days until the Passover. The lamb became part of the family. By the time it was sacrificed on the 14th, it was both cherished and mourned. Just as Christ became a part of the world, just as it is, it was probably difficult for the father to ha have the ability to want to have to allow his son to be crucified and sacrificed and killed. Uh, the same thing with the lamb. They became accustomed to having the lamb in their home, but now the lamb had to be slain. So here it is in Hebrews 9 and 12, Hebrews 9 verse 22. Hebrews 9 verse 22, the law requires that nearly everything must be cleansed with the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So Hebrews 9 and 22 lets us know that the blood must be shed. Then the blood must be sprinkled. Uh, verse 7 says that they shall take of the blood and strike it on two sides of the post on the upper door and the post of the house. Again, the blood must be shed, and then the blood must be sprinkled. Lastly, the blood must be seen. Shed, sprinkled, and then it must be seen. Verse 13 says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. The important point is not whether man can see the blood, but whether God can see the blood. Let me say that again. It's not important for man to see the blood, not your neighbor, not your brother, not your friend. Matter of fact, not even Satan. The person who needs to see the blood is God. It's important for God to see the blood. Understand that they were sinful people, but the blood caused them to be saved. I'm going to say that again. They were sinful people, but the blood caused them to be saved. That's why you ought to thank God for Jesus every chance you get because he covered you and he kept you safe in your sins. Ah, I believe that below, that, that should have been a hunk of a horn right there. Yeah, yeah. Even in your sins, he kept you safe because of the blood. The blood covered you even when you were in your mess. The blood covered you when you were doing your wrong. The blood covered you when you were out there doing your thing. Thank God for the blood. What the blood did, the blood caused them to be safe from their sins. The children of Israel should have been killed too, but because uh, their children were spared and their lives were spared, they should have died. But God spared them. Why did He spare them? Because He was their child. It was He was their. They were His children. We all should die, but because we are the children of God, He covers us. Uh, that's the blessing thing about God. He covers us. Uh, uh, somebody, bring me my my red cover right there. Come on, bring me. So listen, listen. When uh, when they got to the feast, they had to, uh, you're going to stand right there for me, hold that. When they got to the feast, uh, but before they prepared anything, the Bible says that they had to draw the blood. And when they draw the blood, they drew the blood from out of the lamb. Yes, it may have went into a basin. Yes, it may have went in a cup, but it didn't do anything until it was applied to the doorpost. That means the blood had to be put in the right place in order so that when the plague came, because the story was told that when Jesus, when God came, God said, I'm going to kill all the firstborns in Egypt. And so in order to spare the firstborns, this plague that was about to take place, there had to be blood applied to the doorpost of every house. If there was no blood applied, then the firstborn in that house would die. And the Bible tells us that every person that did not have blood, the firstborn was killed. And this is a story that we have to understand that if it was not for the blood of Jesus, none of us would be here today. So I was wondering, I said, how in the world did they still make it out of it? And the Bible tells us that after he shed the blood, he had to be able to see the blood. So even though they were sinful, even though they were a mess, one thing about it, what the blood does, it covers you. When the blood covers you, you no longer see the flesh. All he sees is the blood. And when he sees the blood of Jesus, he passes over. Behind this blood is a sinful 
physical soul. And just like a dead body, whenever a dead body is on the scene, they, what they do is they take a cover and cover up the dead body. What we have to have happen in our life, we've got to cover this body so that it does not glorify in the sight of God. So that's why we have to thank God that he covered us with the blood. You ought to be glad that when God saw you, he saw the blood. When God looked at you, he saw the blood of Jesus. That's why the songwriter said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Whatever you do, you better make sure you're under the blood. Somebody ought to type in there, thank God I'm under, I'm under the blood. It requires to be under the blood. Thank you, sir. Bible goes on to tell us that after it was shed, and after it has been sprinkled, it has to be seen by God. My question is to you today, are you covered? Are you covered? The lamb was not killed in order to be looked at, only but to be eaten. And the Lord Jesus Christ has not seen slain, was not slain merely just so that we can have something to look at. But when it was killed, it had to also be eaten. And so the Bible tells us uh, in John 6, 53 and, uh, verses 53 and 57, John 6, verses 53 to 57, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the man, of, son of man, and drink his blood, ye have no life. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. And verse 57, as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even shall he live by me. Verses 35 says, he declares, I am the bread of life. This is still in chapter 6 of John. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. In verse 48, he says, I am the bread of life. And again, in verse 51, Jesus proclaimed, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. That's why it's important to taste and see that the Lord is good. Ah, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God is the Word. So you said, what am I eating? You've got to eat the Word. Uh, you've got to eat all of it, not just the stuff that you like. Uh, yeah, we like it when he says, I'm your shield and your buckler. But we don't like to eat Matthew 5 and 44 that instructs us, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. We don't want to eat that portion of it, but you've got to eat all of it. Somebody type in the chat, eat all of the roll, eat all of the roll. Uh, so what happens is uh, we take on on Sundays and on Tuesdays, we take and we eat the roll. But then what happens is we fool around and let somebody put their finger down our throat and we throw back up, regurgitate what we have. Do you know it takes at least 36 hours for food to digest? Uh, yeah. uh, so when you get out of service, a high service, that's why you got to be careful who you have a conversation with. Uh-huh. You got to be careful where you go and what you do because the same word that you just allow to enter into your body, if you're not careful, you will vomit it back up. Stop letting folks put their man down your mouth and causing you to regurgitate and vomit what God has placed in your spirit. You've got to give the word time to digest in your system. You've got to give the word time to settle in your system so that when the word gets inside of you, when the word gets in your heart, when the word gets in your spirit and your soul, that's when something comes up against you. You don't have to afraid of fear because you've got the word of God inside of you. Whatever you do, make sure you digest all of the world. I got to move. So the first thing that they did, and the first thing we have to be able to do, if we want to be able to get our deliverance, they had to obey. The verse 27, that ye shall say, it is a sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of children of Israel and Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshiped. 
And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. They did as they were commanded. They bowed before receiving the blessings. Let me say that again. They bowed before receiving the blessings. They praised prior to the promise being performed. They praised prior to the promise being performed. Typically, you thank a person after the job has been completed. But Israel put forth into action uh, their faith and started dancing before the deliverance. Let me say that again, because some of y'all didn't catch that. Typically, you thank somebody after the job has been completed. But the children of Israel trusted God. They obeyed the word and they trusted God and they had faith in God. And the Bible says that they put a praise on it. Before the promise came to pass, they started dancing for the deliverance that had not come yet. My question is, can you dance before deliverance take place? Can you worship before the work has been completed? Can you praise before the promise has been performed? How many faith walkers do I have that can send up a praise right now while the promise is still in process? How many praises do I have that can thank God while the promise is in process? It's in process. It has not been performed, but it's in process. But I'm not going to wait till the battle is over. I'm going to start thanking him right now. I'm going to start glorifying him right now. I'm going to start giving him hallelujah right now. My question is, can you praise him before the promise? Can you thank him before the promise? Uh -huh. Just because I can't see him doesn't mean he's not there. Just because I can't hear him doesn't mean he's not talking. Just because I can't feel him doesn't mean he's not fighting on my behalf. I dare you to magnify him before your miracle is manifested. I dare you to magnify him before the miracle manifests. Before the miracle takes place. Can you magnify God when you magnify him? You make God bigger than your problem. When you magnify him, you make God bigger than your sickness. When you magnify him, you make God bigger than your problem or your child. You make God bigger than the problems in your family. You make God bigger than COVID-19. You make God bigger than injustice. When you magnify God, you enlarge God. Can anybody make God big right now? How do you do it? By opening up your mouth. By lifting your hands. And giving God praise. It's a clear sign to the enemy. That I'm going to bless the Lord. At all times. When I'm up, I'll bless him. When I'm down, I'll bless him. When I'm going through, I'll bless him. Money in my pocket, I'll bless him. No food on the table, I'll bless him. Can you make God be? says in 29 and it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat in his throne unto the firstborn of captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle everything that was firstborn died and Pharaoh rose up in the night he and all of his servants and all the Egyptians and there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead huh. so when God gets ready to, re to work your miracle. Uh -huh. uh, you, all you're going to have to do is sit back and watch. Yeah. All you're going to have to do is observe the mighty hand of God. The yeah. Bible says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. All you're going to have to do is watch God work. You ain't got to do nothing but just thanking them. Because while they were thanking God, God started doing work on their behalf. So all you're going to have to do is observe what God's about to do in your life. Is anybody ready to see God work a miracle? Is anybody ready for God to turn things around? I'm going to 
time, hump those horns and say, I'm ready, I'm ready. Uh, they had to observe. Uh, no, I'm talking, then they had to overcome. They overcame. The Bible says in verse 50, Thus did all the children of Israel, as the land commanded Moses and Aaron, and so did they. Verse 51, And it came to pass that same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Uh, the Lord allowed them to overcome uh, this plague. The Lord allowed them to not only overcome the plague, but he allowed them to experience freedom from the hand of the Egyptians. Uh, the last thing the Bible talks about is that they obtained. They went in, the Bible says, that they were also given uh, silver, gold, and cattle from the Egyptians. So not only is God going to cause you to come out, but you're not going to come out of this thing empty-handed. Uh, you're not going to come out of this situation with nothing. God's going to give you something when it's all. Somebody ought to be happy because you think you're not going to have nothing when it's over. But when it's over, you're not leaving empty-handed. God's going to give you more than you ever expected. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God's going to do even in the midst of the pandemic. You're not coming out of this empty-handed. But you're going to come out with more than what you went in with. Somebody say more. Exodus 3 and 19, 22 and 22 verses. Exodus chapter 3 verse 19 and 22. The reason uh, uh, this was going to happen because God could not lie. The Bible says in Exodus 3, chapter 19, before we get to Exodus 12, the Lord had already spoke the promise. Verse 19, and I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by mighty hand. And verse 20, and I will stretch out my hand. And I will smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Verse 21, and I will give this people favor. God's going to give you favor. I told you this is the year of faith and favor. People think, oh, just because of what COVID has. Listen, you are favored. God didn't allow not one soul at All Nations Church of God in Christ to die of COVID-19. Why? Because the blood comes. And he gave us favor. See, favor allows you to get out of Still are stuck. You want to thank God that He favored you. You want to thank God that you were mindful of Him. He had you on His mind. And because I have favor, it looks like I'm going to die. It looks like it's over. But because of the favor over my life, I'm coming out of this. And when I come out, He's going to bless me better than I was when I went in. woman shall borrow of her daughter, neighbor, and her that sojourneth in her house, jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and daughters, and ye shall, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. He's going to give you gold, silver, and raiment. God's going to give you more than what you asked for. That's why you gotta be careful for what you ask for. You better ask for God for something real big because he's gonna give you more than what you ask for. For he will do exceeding and abundantly above all that you ask or even. So you better think and you better ask big because he's gonna supersede what you say and what you think. Whatever your petition is, change it. Make it bigger. Because if you make God big, he's going to make your blessing bigger. I thank God that something big is about to happen in my life. Something greater is about to happen in my life. Something extraordinary is about to take place in my life. You don't have to say it. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to trust it. 
before you win. You got to worship before you win. Huh? <laughs> Can you worship him before you win? The victory's already been promised. Can you worship God before you get your winning? Guess what? We already won. But I'm going to worship him until I see my breakthrough. I'm going to thank him until I see the exercise. Because he brought me to it. He'll bring me through it. And he's going to bring us out. All right. God will. God can. God will. And God can make everything all right. My next question is, what you got to do is watch while God won't. All you got to do is start looking for your miracle. Look for your blessing. Look for your breakthrough. While you're in your house, just start looking. While you're looking, God's going to start working on your behalf. And then you got to walk into God's will. Walk into the promises of God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not walking by what I see. I'm walking by what I know. And we know that all things work together for our good. I dare you to start walking. I dare you to start walking. Because while you're walking, you're walking into your destiny. You're walking into your blessing. You're walking into your miracle. You're walking into greater things. Walk into the will of God. Walk into the promise of God. But the promises of God are yea and amen. He's a son of man that he cannot lie and he cannot repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. When Israel left Egypt, it was a nation born in a day. It was as if 430 years were a time of gestion when the baby grew larger. The plague and all the plagues were like labor pains before the birth, and now the nation was born. God, you got to remember what God said in the beginning of the text. Let me go back right quick to the beginning of the text. He says in the verse, first verse, this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. I, I need you to hear this real clear. I need you all to hear this real clear. He said this month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. I, I, I need you to catch this. This month, August, shall be the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year. God changed the calendar. Somebody caught it. God changed the calendar. What I'm saying is, for some of you, Today is New Year's Eve. Some of you might need to get out your car real quick and stand by your car. Some of you might need to stand by your car because you're going to need to put your feet on the floor. Because some of you waiting until December 31st. But I'm here to tell you that it's 11.59 p.m. And God's about to change the calendar for you. He's about to make August, January 1st on your behalf. And he's about to begin to do something new in your life. My 
question is, can you shout like it's January the first?
I want y'all to point your hands towards Sister Marsh. Amen. She's got to go to the doctor this month, but we believe the report of God. And I believe God is a faithful God, and because of her faithfulness, God is going to remain faithful to her. And if you're point of contact for those that believe in the power of the blood, just point your hands towards that vehicle right now. And I want you to begin to plead the blood of Jesus over her body right now in the name of Jesus. If you've been sick before and God has been a healer, then you are testimony that God is a healer. So right now in the name of Jesus, we speak healing from the crown of her head to the soul of her feet. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak healing we speak deliverance, and we speak breakthrough in her body, mind, and spirit. The blood still works. So we plead the blood over her. God, you said when you see the blood, that you're going to pass over 
in the name of Jesus. Give healing, God. Give healing, God. Right now, and it is so. And it is so. And it is so. I just see about a five faith believers. Open up your mouth and pray, sir, for the healing. been suffering since January. But today is your new year. And God has changed the calendar on your behalf. That means sickness is going to be behind you. Death is going to be behind you. Suffering is going to be behind you. And you're ready to walk into greater things. Walk into your wealth. Walk into your prosperity. Walk into your peace of mind. Yeah. Heartache and pain 
that's been plaguing you, some of you for the past several years now. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to have a New Year's resolution on December 31st. But today is your day, your day of new beginnings. It's a new season and it's a new day. And God's about to give you brand new stuff for your life. We decree it, declare it. So one more time, lift those hands. We're moving and begin to worship him. Just say it reaches in Facebook land. He reaches.
it reaches. Jesus was betrayed. He became the Passover so that we could make it over. And I'm so glad that he became the bread of life. And that because of his blood that was applied to our lives, we now have a right to the tree of life. So tonight, today, we take this time to remember what he did for us. Because if he hadn't done it, we wouldn't be here all today. So on that night that he was betrayed, he took the bug, the body, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take, eat all of it. He took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the New Testament representing new beginnings. That what was before is over. And now it's time to walk into new beginnings. Today is your new year. So he gave the blood and said, Happy New Year. Drink ye all of it. The blood for the remission of sins. It will never, 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 never. They're going to come around and they'll just collect those. They'll come around. If you don't have a garbage book, amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Brother Broyles. It will never, never, never. Listen, you can go on the side right here. Sister Bates, they were going to be over here and they're going to have fresh, fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables for those who would like to get something from the garden before you leave. Amen. Go home and wash you some squash and some kale. Amen. And have it for dinner and eat healthy. Amen. So please go to the side over here and meet Sister Bates and be able to do so. I want to say God bless to all of the work, youth workers, amen, that have been working here on the past several weeks. All the young men, amen, Brother Jonathan Bearfield, who's been supervising that Youth Bridges work program, and we thank God for it. And we're grateful for all of you coming out on today. It's so good to see you all. Uh, listen. Y'all make sure y'all still social distance. So y'all get back in your cars now. Amen. No touching, no hugging. Love your mother, Clark. Amen. I know it. I know it was blood. They sang the hymn as they went out. This concludes our drive-in communion service. Join us back on Tuesday. Prayers at 7 o'clock. Amen. And Bible study starts at 7.30. Amen. We will join ourselves together on Tuesday via Facebook Live. Amen. We thank God for all of you and we continue to lift every last one of you up in prayer. One day, yeah, he died. Oh, oh I know it. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling.
Father, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all of God's people say amen. He died upon the cross.